Alright, so in this video, we're going to add a, another row with two columns, and one of the columns will have a text column, while the other one will be a button column, and we're also going to have a blue background. So let's just go ahead and add a row. Just going to click Add New Row. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the size of our, of our columns from even to try on, so that the very first column has most of the width while the second column has just 13.4% uh, of the remaining width of the entire row. Let's click insert. Now my first widget I'm going to add a text widget inside origin editor. Let's click edit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some text which I've already created. I'm just going to paste it over here. So these are pictures taken from my previous conferences, yada, yada, yada. To view more pictures from my previous conferences, please click the more button to the right. Let me just go ahead and click done. And then over here on our very small column, I'm going to add our button widget, which is the site origin button over here. Click that. Let's click edit. I'm going to add more. Now, over here for the destination URL, you can always add an external link or if you have a separate page that you're creating for your gallery specifically, you can simply add the URL over here and then you can choose to open that in a new window. Let's click done. Uh, let's save the home page and let's take a look at what we have. Okay, so we have a text, we have a button, it's okay. But what I want to do right now is to add a blue background to our row. And in order to do that, I'm going to come down to our row button, click Edit Row, go to Design, and I'm going to add a background color of blue over here. Click Done. Let's save the homepage again. Refresh. All right, so <laughs> we have a blue background, but then our text is barely readable, so we need to change the color of our text. Let's come back, click Edit now inside our text widget. Let's go to Design, and I'm going to change my font color to white. Click Done, save the home page, refresh. Okay, looks much better. But now let's also change the styling of our button. Let's do that. I'm gonna come down here, click Edit. And what I wanna do is change the button color. Let's take that to white. And the text color, I'm gonna change that to blue. And there's some additional styling we could change over here. We could change the font size, we could change the rounding. Uh, from slightly rounded to very rounded or even completely rounded and we could also add some padding if we wanted to but medium is fine for me with the benefit of hindsight i know that medium is just about right and there's also something here called the button theme which you can play around with there are three di different designs for the button i'm just going to choose flat for now uh, click done let's save the home page refresh Okay, this looks so much better, but now here's a problem. As you can see, there isn't enough space between the borders of our row as well as the text and the button. Now, in order to add more space uh, between our text and the button, we'll have to add something called padding to our row. So I'm going to come back down to our row. And then over here in layout, I'm going to add 20 pixels of padding around the entire row. 20 pixels, click done, save the home page, come back, refresh, and as you can see, we now have so much more space in between our text columns, the button column, as well as the, as well as the borders of our blue background. So, that's pretty much how to add our text widget as well as the button widget and a blue background to our row. Join me in the next class where we'll continue to build out our one-page website. Thank you for watching. Next up on our plate will be to add a pricing table to our website and 
most of the time when you go on conferences they typically have different kinds of packages you could have like the full package that will give you all the benefits and you could have something like the half package where you get half the benefits and uh, and so on and so forth so in this video i'm just going to add i'm going to show you how to add the pricing table along with uh, different kinds of packages as well as the features that come with those packages so let's come down to our uh, back end as usual let's add a new row make that one column let's drag this to the very end and inside I'm gonna add our pricing widget which would be the site origin price table I'm gonna click that edit and I'm just gonna add my title as pricing and now here we're gonna add three different columns because we're going to have three different packages we'll have the uh, let's go with the master package we'll have the private package and then we'll have the basic package so let's go ahead and add our very first package so i'm going to click the drop down arrow over here add the title as master package uh price would be two hundred dollars per person and I'm just gonna add some features so I'm gonna click add here and then I'm gonna click the drop down arrow so let's go with the very first feature which would be full presentation techniques I'm gonna click the drop down arrow again to edit I'm gonna add another one again and this will, will be all books from presenters and I'm gonna add the last feature which is by far the most important feature which would be after party tickets yippee we're gonna party like it's 99 <laughs> all right so let me just add that and so yeah, we have a master package, it's $200 per person. We've got three features. So I'm just gonna add the package. And now I'm gonna add the second package, which would be uh, the private package. Private package. And the price for this one is gonna be $150 per person. And our features, let's add the very first feature, which would be uh, half presentation techniques. These are not real features, by the way. I'm just, you know, coming up with things from, from my head, basically. Uh, let me add another feature. And this one is going to be, let's go with uh, three free books from presenters. And the last one is going to be, uh, let's go with uh, free snacks and drinks. All right, I'm going to add that. And now I'm going to add uh, the very last package, which will be the basic package. I'm going to add it the very same way I've added these two previous packages along with its features. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to resume once I've added the package. Stay tuned. All right, I'm back, and as you can see, I've added the basic package. And as you can see, it's just $25 per person, and the features are basic presentation techniques, one free book, and one <laughs> free drink. So th this is obviously not the best package, but hey, it's, it's $25 per person, so uh, you get what you pay for. All right, so let me just close that. And then over here, we also have some additional styling that you could add to your table. You can change the header color, the featured header color, and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to click Done. Click Save the Home Page. Let's refresh. And there you go. As you can see, we have our three packages. The master, Private, Basic, the Pricing, as well as the features that come along with each package so that's how to add pricing to your website 
thank you for watching join me in the next class where we're going to add our text column with a parallax image background thank you for watching all right so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our text with a parallax image background so i'll just come down here we're going to add a new row gonna make this one column again and actually I'm just drag this to the very bottom there you go all right and inside I'm gonna add our text widget and I'm just gonna copy my text from my other screen here and I'm just gonna paste that over here I'm just align everything to the center. So yeah, don't miss it. Our speakers and presenters will give you so much knowledge and yada yada yada. Three days of non-stop learning and then after party to mark the occasion. This is gonna be the best event you've ever attended. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just gonna click done. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna add my parallax background image to the row. So I'm gonna click edit row. I'm gonna come down to design. And I'm going to change the background image. I'm going to add the image for the Eiffel Tower. Click Done. And then set the background image to Parallax. Click Done. Let's save the home page. And let's see what we have. Alright, so two things uh, that are obviously wrong. It's not going full width. We want our background and our text to go full width and there is also not enough padding between the text and the borders of our row so let's fix that so let's come back down to our row first i'm going to do is come down to layout go with full width stretched Click done and now for the text widgets i'm going to add some padding design actually it's in layout layout Let's add 80 pixels of padding. Click done. Let's click save the home page. Let's refresh. And now this looks a lot better, but what I want to do is to drag this particular row above our pricing table. So let's just do that. Drag this over here. And uh, oh, nope, actually, it should. So it's just beneath the uh, the row with the text and the button, but just above the present table. So let's save that. Let's refresh yet again. Okay, so now you can see the parallax effect. As I'm scrolling, the image itself scrolls. As you can see, as I'm scrolling up, the image is scrolling up. As I'm scrolling down, the image in the background is also scrolling down. So that's pretty much how... Uh, the parallax effect works you you'll see it in more action as we continue to add uh, more rows beneath the pricing table so that's how to add a text column with a parallax background image join me in the next class as we'll continue to build out our website thank you for watching all right so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some testimonials to our website and these testimonials would be from previous attendees of our WordPress conference. And this is, of course, a very common feature you'd find on most uh, websites for conferences and events and things like that. People, you know, telling you how wonderful it was when they attended it and why you should also attend. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another role with testimonials from two or let's say four people. So let's come to our back end and I'd like the format for our testimonials to be exactly like the one we have over here we'll have a site origin headline and then we'll also have the testimonials widget just beneath the headline widget so what I will do is just to duplicate this row it's over here and I'm just gonna drag this down here to the bottom of a page just beneath the present table and what I'm going to do now is just to edit the very first widget, which is the site origin headline widget. I'm going to change this to testimonials. Go 
just click done and now over here i'm going to delete this origin edit uh, widget and i am going to add a new widget called where is it the site origin testimonials widget i'm just going to add that let's come down here to the end and now i'm going to click edit to add our very first testimonial now when you open this you might be a little bit confused because there are so many options available instantly simply just click the settings tab and then click the design tab and now it's a lot easier to navigate your way through this page so let's add the very first testimonial i'm going to click add click the drop down arrow button here and the very first name would be let's go with uh mark mark jones uh, location is maryland and we can also add a picture of Mark. So let's do that. And yeah, this looks like Mark. <laughs> Set the media. And let's add his testimonial. I attended this conference last year. And it was epic. To this one as well. All right, that's a very simple testimonial. <laughs> and you can also choose to add custom links here if you wanted to. But uh, I think this is just fine. So I'm just going to click the drop down arrow again. Let's add another one. Let's go with Jessica Stone. Location will be Arizona. Media. Let's go with this lovely lady here. And let's add her one testimonial. I learned a lot from this conference two years ago. I believe this is the best. WordPress, oops, WordPress conference available. Okay. And let's click the drop down arrow again and let's click done. Save the home page. And let's take a look. All right, so testimonials, and this looks, <laughs> this does not look good at all. So we need to make some changes to our testimonials widget. Let's go back. Click edit and now I'm going to click on settings over here. And as you can see, we have three testimonials per row. Let's change that to two. And we've also got settings for responsive design as well. But again, as you can see, the values have already been inputted automatically. And I would not change this if I were you, unless, of course, you have very specific reasons to do so. Just leave these settings as they are. So, all right, so we've changed the number of testimonials from uh, three to two. Let's now click on the design. Now for the image, I'm going to change the shape from square to round. Let's make the image a little bit bigger. Let's go all the way to, uh, let's say, 100. And let's see, testimonial layout is side by side. Pattern is four, pattern is ten. All right, that's fine. Let's... Let's click the preview button here to see. And this actually looks a lot better, except for the fact that uh, the images are maybe a little bit too big. So let's reduce the image size. Let's go down to maybe 75. Let's preview. 
and as you can see there isn't that much of a difference so let's try adding some more padding to our text and we can even add some padding to the right of our testimonials widget over here so that's what this padding here refers to so i'm gonna switch this from 10 to let's go with 20 and let's preview that let's see how that looks like and okay so we now have more space between our text and the borders of our widget but now this other pattern here let's go all the way to uh, yeah let's go all the way to 72 maybe okay just to give you a very clear idea of what i'm talking about now you can see we have this sort of circular border to the right so that's what the second pattern does and this actually looks this looks good <laughs> it might look bad to you but to me it's uh it's okay let's let's just click down and let's see what we have uh, let's refresh and okay yeah so this looks a lot better right now we've got our testimonials people to the left there are testimonials to the right and uh yeah the design and ship looks good it's okay it's this is fine for me i <laughs> i really don't know about you but just in case you're building this out with me you can also make adjustments to the design it's really really up to you you can uh, change the colors as well we have colors for the widget background for the text background for the text color you can change the padding you can change the user position from left to right to middle and you can even change the testimonial layouts so you have the text above the user or you have the text below the user so i hope you now know how to add testimonials to your website thank you for watching the video join me in the next class where we'll continue to build out our website thank you for watching all right, so just to give you a heads up before we continue building out our website, I have added some additional content to the pricing table. As you can see, I've added three additional features to each of the three packages just to give it a more robust feel and look. And I've also added two more testimonials, one from Xing Guan from China and one from Tom Müller all the way from Germany. So we now have people from all over the world giving testimonials about this wonderful conference. So I just wanted to let you know if you're building out this site like I am, this will be some good practice for you. So go ahead and add uh, three more additional features for your packages and you can also add two more testimonials or maybe even four more. It's up to you. So just to give you a heads up, join me in the next class where we'll continue building out our site. Thank you for watching. So believe it or not, we're actually at the very, well, close to the very end of this particular section. We've almost finished building out our entire one-page website. The last feature we need to add is the address row. It's kind of uh, strange that we'll have all this talk about this fantastic conference and, you know, these world-class instructors and this amazing gallery and, you know, people all over the world are talking about how awesome this conference is and yet there's no address <laughs> for the conference. That's just, uh, that's just weird. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the address for the conference, the physical address, and it will be a Google map. And of course, I'm going to use my favorite address of all time, the White House address. So what I'm going to do is to, first of all, duplicate this row. And in fact, I think we've got something similar here. So let me just duplicate this entire row, change our headline to address. Don't miss it. <laughs> All right, I'm click done. And I'm going to delete the testimonials widget and I'm going to add a text widget instead. Site origin editor. And I'm going to click edit. And now I'm just going to copy the White House address. And then I'll paste it. Let's make this an H2. Let's center it. Maybe make Washington in a new line. 
let's click done and now finally we're going to add the Google Maps widget which would be site origin Google Maps let's click that click edit and now here you can simply type in the the name of uh, the location and in this case it's just going to be White House and of course the map will automatically set the location to will set the address of the location to White House now for settings you can choose to have either an interactive map or simply a static image and of course the difference is with a static image you can only change the width height and the zoom level but with interactive you can set additional features like scroll to zoom draggable and some other features like that so just going to leave this as it is let me close settings let's check the markers and of course you can also choose to add a particular icon for your marker if you wanted to uh, there are so many options available here to choose from you can change the styles from default to custom to a predefined style if you wanted to uh, if you've got your directions from a standing point or a destination, you could add those. Change the travel mode from driving to walking to transit, avoid highways, avoid tolls. You can add waypoints as well. And you can even add a Google API key as well if you wanted to. There are so many options available. And I think for any kind of map that you want, you're, you're pretty much covered with this with this widget it's simply amazing but i'm not going to add any directions or any of the sort i don't need to everyone knows where the white house is so i'm just going to click done let's save the home page let's see how this looks like okay address don't miss it and okay well we want our map to go all the way to the end so let's just change the layout of our row edit row layout would be full with stretched click done save on page now let's refresh and now this is much better now we have our map going full width and of course we have the white house location with the marker and we have our address and headline and before i round up this video i wanted to show you something now you may have noticed that every time we have a headline there is also this border at the bottom it's kind of like grayish border but you can see it what i want to do is to show you how you can either remove this border if you wanted to or even reduce the space between the headline and the border itself so let me come down to my uh, headline widget click edit and now over here we have something called the divider which I'm gonna click on and now here you can change the style from solid to dotted and you can click none if you didn't want to have the border at all but I'm gonna stick with solid but look at what I'm gonna do I am going to reduce the space between the address and this border by changing the margin from 20 pixels to negative 20 pixels so this is a little bit of some css information here you can add negative margins if you wanted to and you can even click the preview button here and now you would see that there is very little to no space between the address between the headline itself and the border so let's just go ahead click done click save the home page let's refresh And now you can see there is hardly any space between the address, between the headline itself and the border. So you can always add negative margins, but you can never add negative padding. This is something that you should always keep in mind. You can have negative margins, but you can never have negative padding. One last thing I wanted to show you before I go is something of a bug with the headline widget now you can see our value is set to negative 20 right if i come back and if i clicked inside to edit the headline widget you will notice that the negative margin has disappeared so this is something of a maybe a, something of a bug with the site origin uh, plugin and hopefully it's something that, that they might fix uh, maybe in a few weeks from now they might be able to fix it but 
as long as you don't come in to start editing the particular uh, headline widget, you will be fine. So just in case, if you ever end up using negative margins and you save your homepage, and then for some reason you have to go back to that headline widget to change something else, always make sure that you come back to add that negative sign to your margin. So that's just something to, to take note of. It's a bug, but it's not a handful or destructive bug in any way. So I'm just click done once again, save the homepage. And uh, so that's it. We're pretty much almost very nearly done with building out our site. Thank you for watching. Join me in the next class as we'll begin to round up building up our website. Thank you for watching. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the concept of anchor links. Now, anchor links can be very, very useful, especially on websites that are one page like the one we have over here. Now, if you notice, we have sort of different sections. We have like uh, the video section and then we have like the instructor section, the gallery section. Uh, we have the pricing section, the testimonials section, the address and so on and so forth. Now, it's very important that whenever you have websites that are this long, that have pages this long, you always want to make it very easy for your viewers and your users to be able to jump to each section pretty easily rather than them having to scroll down to the particular section they're looking for and that's exactly where the concept of anchor links come into play anchor links are kind of like your menu items except for the fact that they link to specific sections within the same page just to give you an example i have this website here and look here it says click here this is an anchor link to the bottom of the page now, if I click on this link, it takes me straight down to the bottom of this very same page. And if I want to go back to the top, I simply click here and now I am back to the top of the page. So that's pretty much how anchor links work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add anchor links for our instructors, our gallery, pricing, testimonials, and of course, the contact address. So in order to do this, we're going to use something we haven't uh, used yet, which is the live editor. So I'm just going to click on the live editor button here. And what this does is that it, it allows us to make changes to our uh, site origin widgets and rows while viewing the results live. Some people find this useful. Some people like it. I personally don't really like this. I prefer doing everything from the back end, but I'm just doing this just to give you a variety and just to show you, you know, the, the, the different ways how you can make changes to your site origin templates. All right. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is to come down to our instructors. Now, as you can see, when you highlight a particular widget, it will show over here on the left what widget you are currently highlighting. So over here, you can see I'm hovering over our instructors and you can see this widget here turns blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on edit, edit row. I'm going to come down to attributes and I'm going to add an ID to the row. And I'm going to name it row dash instructors. I'm going to click done. Okay. And now I'm going to come down to gallery. I'm going to edit the role for the gallery. Again, I'm going to add an ID. I'm going to say row dash gallery. Come down to a pricing. So to come down here as well, pricing. Okay, so this is the row. And again, I'm going to add an ID row dash pricing. We have testimonials as well. And last but not least, I am going to add an ID to our contact row. So just click over here and let's say uh, row contact or row address, whichever one. Okay.
So we've added our anchor links to our widgets. I'm going to click done now and I'm going to click update. So the next thing to do now is we're going to create a menu. Uh, let's create a menu. Uh, let's name this just uh, the main menu. I'm going to delete this. We don't need any of these items. And now we're going to add custom links. So the first custom link I'm going to add will be the one for our uh, instructors. So I'm going to add the mark here and then say row dash instructor. And then I'm going to give it a link text instructor. Actually, I think it was instructors. Yeah, it was instructors. Let's add that. Now I'm going to do the same for gallery as well. Hashtag row gallery. Gallery. Add to menu. Hashtag row pricing. Got two more row testimonials. And finally, hashtag row contact. And I'm just going to say this is address instead. Add to menu, make this the primary menu. Let's save it. And now let's take a look at what we have. All right, so I've got instructors, gallery, pricing, testimonial, address. Now look what happens when I click instructors. It brings us down to instructors. If I click address, it brings us down to our address. And actually, you know what? It might make sense to create uh, maybe like a home link. So that it brings us back here to the top. So let's go ahead and do that instead, actually. Let's do that. Uh, let's click our live editor. Okay, and let's just add an ID to our very first row, which would be the one for the video attributes. And let's just say row home. Row home. Done. Done. Update. Let's go back to our menu and we can add a home link as well. Custom link, hashtag row home, home. Add to menu, let's drag this to the top, save it. And now let's see what we have. Okay, so let me click testimonial for example. And okay, we're in testimonials, click gallery, it takes us to gallery. Click address, takes us down here, click home, and it takes us straight back to the top. So this is an awesome way of ensuring that your users can navigate their way around your website pretty easily. So that's it for Anchor Links. Thank you for watching. Join me in the next class as we continue our cleanup and roundup for our website. Thank you for watching. Okay, okay, okay. So we are actually at the very end of the development of our one page website and all we're going to do in this video is just to do some last minute cleanup we're going to change uh, the name of our website from my blog to something more appropriate and of course also make sure that the footer as well reflects uh, the name of our website and maybe just do a few little pieces of cleanup around our one page website so uh, let's get started. First things first, I'm going to change the name of our website from the generic my blog to uh, WordPress conference 2016. I'm going to remove this. Let's save it. And of course, we don't have a logo, so well, this will just have to do for now. WordPress Conference 2016, let's come down and okay, so we have copyright 2016, WordPress Conference 2016, that's fine.
Now, if you if we had a logo, all I would have had to do would be to come down to the back end, go to appearance, customize, and then simply click on. Come on, <laughs> I click on uh, theme settings, then click on branding. And then from branding, simply upload the logo that we would, we would use. But we don't have a logo, so this will just have to do for now. All right. So next thing we're going to do is I would like to increase the space between our rows. And if you remember, this was, I think, in this very second class. We talked about the settings for the page builder. And let's uh, go to layout. If you recall... Uh, we spoke about the row gutter, which, or rather, I'm sorry, the row bottom margin, which is the margin below rows. So what I can do is to increase this from 30 to, let's say, let's go with 50 pixels. And now we should have more space between our rows. So as you can see, yep, as you can see, there's now that slight difference, but there's now more space between our instructors and the gallery, as you can see. A little bit more space between our blue background row and the gallery. Okay, yep, it's not that much, but it's the the additional twenty pixels makes all the difference. All right, so next thing I want to do is to maybe make our parallax background row a bit larger. So what I'm going to do is to add some extra padding to the text. Let's come down to Yep, this is it. All right, so let's say, let's go to layout. We have 80 pixels. I'm going to make this, let's double it, 160 pixels instead. And let's also make everything bold and also make it black. Make sure it's a black color so that it will show a lot better. Let's check it out. And yep, this is a lot better. Okay, so now people can read the text a little bit more because it's black. And of course, the image now is a little bit larger. The row is a bit larger because we increased the size of the padding. Our pricing, let's change our pricing heading to match the ones we have for testimonials and, you know, gallery instructors and so on and so forth. So let's change that as well. Oops. <laughs> edit, edit home page yeah that's fine edit home page all right so this is a pricing table so what i'm going to do is to simply duplicate our headline widget now drag it over here change the headline that we have here from testimonials to pricing let's click done and now let's remove this pricing text within the table widget uh, pricing let me just change this okay click done save let's take a look and awesome pricing and now we have our table a pricing table yep this looks a lot better and there you go so i believe at this point our website is done we have our video we have our introductory text our instructors a gallery Palex background image, a pricing table, testimonials, and of course, last but not least, the address row. So that's it for the one page website. Uh, join me in the next class where we'll talk about one very last useful feature that we have available with the site origin plugin. Thank you for watching and <laughs> oops, there's actually paused the video in a very funny spot with the guy's uh, tongue in an awkward position. Anyway, uh, I'll see you in the next class. Bye. <laughs> One very amazing and very useful feature that comes along with the Site Origin Page Builder plugin is that it already has several pre-built 
one page layouts, which you can simply insert into your page and then from there simply edit. Just to give you an example, I'm here trying to add a new page. I'm going to click on page builder and down here you can see something called pre-built. Now if I click on this, uh, it says, okay, do you want to browse the pre-built layouts directory? Click enable. And now you can see we have all these pre-built layouts already made available to us. So let's say, for example, I wanted to create a contact page. I've got two different templates here for contact. I have the simple business contact and I have the contact design. I can simply click on it and then click insert. And now we've got three options here. You can either choose to insert this layout after any content that you've created, before the content that you've created, or if you simply want to replace all your content altogether. Now, this is a brand new page. I haven't added any content at all, so it really doesn't matter what option I choose. Now we have our template all laid out for us. So let me just click preview and see what we have. All right, this looks a little bit um, jumbled, but we can change that. Let me first of all change the default page default to uh, no sidebar. Uh, we move the page display, we move all this stuff. We don't need that. Let me close this. Let me preview this again. All right, now as you can see, this looks so much better. And now from here, all I have to do is to simply come down here and I can start editing my the widgets that have already been laid out for me. I can change the title from send us a message to something else and so on and so forth. So that's the amazing feature that's available with the Page Builder plugin. Uh, we've got templates for a gym, for a dentist, uh, fresh organic food, sports, uh, another contact uh, template, templates for designs. I mean, it's it's simply amazing. And not this isn't just all. We can also click next. And we've got even more. We have one for a shop, for a cafe, and even one for a charity layout. So if you're interested, I will invite you to try and play around with some of these templates. If you're trying to build other pages for your website. You can simply come around here, browse whatever template best suits your your taste. Of course, you've got the preview button here as well. You can simply click on the preview and then you would see what this template already has laid out for you. And then from there, you can simply insert the template to your page and then edit whatever widgets that you need to edit. So thank you for watching the video and I will see you next time. Bye. All right, so I want to thank you so much for sticking with me all through these classes. We've uh, <laughs> we've built our one-page website, and hopefully, all that you've learned and all that you've seen from these past few classes has given you the knowledge, confidence, and ability to build your own one-page website, whether it's for an event or an occasion or your birthday, your wedding, or whatever. Hopefully. You have learned enough that will give you the ability to build your own website. Now, don't forget, of course, that we haven't even used maybe about half of all the other widgets available with the site uh, page builder plugin. Uh, feel free to experiment with lots of all the of all these uh, widgets. You've got widgets for features, icon, post carousel, and so on and so forth. You've got one for an image slider here as well. You've got one here for social media buttons. So. I invite you, I even challenge you to try and create a different kind of one-page website using some of the widgets that we haven't used here yet. So once again, if you've got any questions, always feel free to reach out to me. I'm here to help you. Uh, it's been a pleasure building out this one-page website with you. Thank you so much for watching it and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.